Today we will prove Reese Frechet representation theorem. It is named after two mathematicians, Hungarian mathematician Frigis Ries and French mathematician Maurice René Frechet. This theorem states that let H be a Hilbert space over field K, where field K is either the field of complex numbers or field of real numbers and h star beats dual space let me recall you that h star is the set of all bounded linear functionals on h that is if f belongs to h star then f is a bounded linear functional from h to field of scalars that is k then f belongs to h star if and only if there exists a unique z in h such that f of x is equal to inner product xz for every x in h and norm of f is equal to norm of z. Let us prove this theorem. For z belongs to h, we define a function f from h to k such that f of x is equal to inner product xz for every x belongs to h. We will show that f belongs to h star. f is linear. For x, y in h and for scalars alpha, beta, f of alpha x plus beta y is equal to inner product alpha x plus beta y and z. Uh, this is by definition of f and since uh, this inner product is linear in first argument so we have here alpha times inner product xz plus beta times inner product yz and by definition of f this is equal to alpha into f of x plus beta into f of y thus f is linear next we show that f is bounded. For each x in h, uh, mod of f of x is equal to mod of inner product xz and this is less than or equal to norm of z into norm of x by Solge inequality and thus we have shown that f is bounded. Of course, here we have mod of fx is less than or equal to some scalar some uh, real number uh, norm of z into norm of x for every x in it. So, f is bounded. Hence, we have shown that f is a bounded linear functional on h. So, f belongs to h star. Conversely, let f belongs to h star. Then, we have to show that there exists a unique element z in h such that f of x is equal to inner product xz for every x in h. Now, suppose if f is equal to 0, that means f of x is equal to 0 for every x in h, then f of x is equal to inner product xz is equal to 0 holds for z is equal to 0. Means there exists a unique element z is equal to 0 means there exists a unique element zero vector in h such that f of x is equal to inner product xz and we also note that norm of f is equal to zero and norm of z is equal to zero so norm of f is equal to norm of z here now consider the case when f is not equal to zero means there exists some element in h which is uh, map to some non-zero element under f. That means null space of f, that is n of f, does not contain all the elements of h and so n of f is not equal to h. As f is a bounded linear functional, so the null space n of f is a closed subspace of h. We have proved this result earlier. And since n of f is a closed subspace of h, so where h is a Hilbert space, 
सो बाय प्रोजेक्शन थ्योरम h is equal to n of f direct sum orthogonal complement of n of f as n of f is not equal to h so orthogonal complement of n of f is not a z null space that is that is not equal to zero space as we know that orthogonal complement of h is the zero space and since here n of f is not equal to h so orthogonal complement of n of f is not null space and and this implies there exists some non zero element z not in the orthogonal complement of n of f now we consider a set s containing elements v of the form f of x into z not minus f of z not into x where x belongs to h then f image of elements of s that is f of v is equal to f of x into f of z not minus f of z not into f of x and this is equal to 0 for every v belongs to s because f is linear and here we know that f of x and f of z not are scalar that means image of every element of s is zero under f so s is contained in the null space of f that is n of f and since uh, z not belongs to orthogonal complement of n of f so z not is orthogonal to every element of n of f and so z not is orthogonal to s also hold that s and that means in a product of v and z not is equal to 0 for every v in s and this implies in a product of f of x z not minus f of z not into x and z not is equal to 0 every s in h and then we know that in a product is linear in first argument so we can write here f of x into in a product z not z not minus f of z not in a product x z not and this is equal to 0 for every s in h this implies that f of x into inner product z z dot is equal to f z dot into inner product f z dot um, for every x belongs to h and this implies that f of x into norm of z dot is square is equal to f z dot into inner product x z dot for every x in h and this implies f of x is equal to f z not divided by norm of z not square into in a product x z not for every x in h and this implies that f of x is equal to in a product x and complex conjugate of f z not divided by norm of z not square into z not for every x belongs to h as we know that in a product is conjugate linear in the second argument so here we write complex conjugate of f z not and then this implies that f of x is equal to in a product x z for every x in h where z is equal to complex conjugate of f z not divided by norm of z not square into z not and that element belongs to h so we have shown that f of x is equal to x z for every x in h for a uh, for some element z in h now we show that norm of f is equal to norm of z by definition of norm of f um, we have norm of f is equal to supremum of mod of f of x such that x belongs to h and norm of x is less than or equal to 1 by definition of f we have this is equal to supremum of mod of inner product of x and z such that x belongs to h 
and norm of x is less than or equal to 1. But we know that by Schwarz inequality, mod of uh, inner product of x z is less than or equal to norm of x into norm of z. So this uh, term can be written as less than or equal to supremum of norm of z into norm of x such that x belongs to h and norm of x is less than or equal to 1. And since norm of z is common in all the terms, so we can write here this is less than or equal to norm of z into supremum of um, the set containing norm of x such that x belongs to h and norm of x is less than or equal to 1. So supremum of the bracketed term is 1. So we can write this is equal to norm of z. So this implies that norm of f is less than or equal to norm of z. Uh, the first inequality which is required and uh, now we have to uh, prove the um, reverse inequality. And if z is not equal to 0, then a norm of f, uh, since this is a uh, equal to supremum of mod of inner product xz such that x belongs to h and norm of x is less than or equal to 1. And since norm of z is not equal to 0, so uh, we know that uh, norm of the element z divided by norm of z is equal to 1. So uh, we can write here norm of f is greater than or equal to one of the term that is mod of inner product z divided by norm of z and z and this is equal to 1 divided by norm of z into mod of inner product of z and z and now inner product of z z is equal to norm of z square divided by we have here norm of z and that is equal to norm of z. So here we have obtained that norm of f is greater than or equal to norm of z in the case when z is not equal to 0 and here we have the second inequality. But we also note that if z is equal to 0 then norm of z is also 0 and so the second inequality also holds. And so second inequality holds for every z in h. From 1 and 2, we obtain that norm of f is equal to norm of z. Now we shall show that z is unique. If possible, let z dash belongs to h such that f of x is equal to inner product x z dash for every x in h. But we have shown that f of x is equal to inner product of xz for every x in h. So, we have inner product of xz is equal to inner product of xz dash for every x in h. And this implies that inner product of x and z minus inner product of xz dash is equal to 0 for every x in h. And this implies that inner product of x and z minus z dash is equal to 0 for every x in h. Since z and z dash are elements of h and h is an inner product space, so z minus z dash also belongs to h. And uh, if we take x is equal to z minus z dash, then we find that inner product of z minus z dash and z minus z dash is equal to 0. But this implies that norm of z minus z dash is square is equal to 0. And this implies that z is equal to z dash. That means z is unique. Now, we have a notational convenience from this theorem as by these Prashay representation theorem, we have f belongs to h star if and only if there exists a unique z in h such that f of x is equal to inner product x and z for every x in h and norm of f is equal to norm of z. As f is determined by z belongs to h, so we denote f as fz. 
so that we have fz of x is equal to inner product xz for every x in h and norm of fz is equal to norm of z. Thank you.